Hi everyone, Michael Brown back with you. Welcome back to Educator.com's Adobe Photoshop Elements Beginning and Intermediate course. In the last couple of lessons, we have been doing a tour of the Elements Editor workspace. We're in the expert mode with the toolbar, the document space, menu bar, options bar, taskbar, and panels. In the last couple of lessons, we toured the, the toolbar and all of the tools, and we dealt with shortcuts, one and two key shortcuts, which save a lot of time. And in the last lesson on shortcuts, you saw a physical example of how much time you can save just in a short time period working on an image by using shortcuts versus going back and forth and opening and closing to access your tools. At the beginning, obviously, you're going to be doing a lot of going back and forth just because you get have to familiarize yourself with where things are. But if you incorporate those shortcuts as you move forward, you will be amazed at how easy it will be and how flawless and also time-saving all of that will be. We went over the toolbox. In this lesson, we're going to deal with the menu bar and all of the drop-down menus that look rather daunting, but basically they're pretty easy. And I'm going to show you the features in these menus that you're going to be using, not every feature. The menu bar and the options bar, not the tool options bar down here that has the options for the individual tools, but the options bar that's right above the toolbox and the document window and below the menu bar with the five buttons, open, quick, guided, expert, which we're in, and create. So let's get started with the menu bar and just run right down the list. In a Macintosh only, you will see Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor drop down. And the only two things you're going to deal with here, this is where the preferences are in a Mac, and this is where you quit Photoshop Elements, but you should be using the two key shortcut shown here, Command or Control Q. The file menu, what do you think it has to do with? Sure, files, the things you do to a full file. You do what? You create a new one, you open existing one, and this is cool feature, open recently edited file, keeps track of the latest 10 files that you have opened that are either open or closed. This is the last 10. And you notice we have, let's go to the photo bin. We have one, two, three, four, five open, and yet you see 10 listed in the uh, drop down list. Kind of cool. So it saves you a little time again. We're talking about time saving in that you don't necessarily have to go hunt for a current file that you may have just closed. All right. Below that, you can duplicate an existing file. And then we go basically open and duplicate, closing and saving and printing. That's what we're dealing with. Close one file, close them all, save a file over itself, save as and save for web. We'll go in more detail in these as we go on. Save for web is a very cool feature, allows you to reduce a file even more in its size, I mean the resolution size, than you would a traditional JPEG so that it opens rapidly on the web yet still looks good but can't be copied. Kind of very cool feature. Um, also, there's your print, and there's another two key shortcut, Command or Control P, also Command or Control S for save, and Command or Control O for open. Open, close, save, print. Things you do to a file. 